I think that just about everyone has their own definition of what a budget is. And there is a huge difference between living off of potatoes, rice, and ramen versus being a bit strict and just keeping track of your expenses. When you actually look at the average amount of money spent per week on food per person in America, it's around $120. And you might think that's a lot of money to spend on groceries, but we're not just talking about groceries here. The average person spends about that amount of money on all food in general. So if they get a $5 coffee every morning, if they go out to a restaurant once a week, their total food budget is $120 per week. And regardless of what diet you follow, going with that average food budget, it's pretty easy to follow even a carnivore diet, a keto diet, diets that are deemed to be more expensive because they are higher in quality foods, particularly animal foods. And can you do a carnivore or a keto or a paleo diet on an extremely strict budget? Yes, I guess you can. Maybe last year I did a video on how you can do the diet as cheaply as possible. You would be buying conventionally raised ground beef, uh, commercial eggs, super cheap stuff. So if you really want to buy cheap meat and low quality stuff, you can make this diet work for like two or three dollars a day. But at that cost, you're really losing a lot of health benefits and in the long run, you're going to end up spending more on medical bills. Uh, you're not going to feel good. You're not going to have as much energy. I'm a big believer in spend the money on the food, be an optimal version of yourself, and use that optimal version of yourself to make more money to be able to afford that quality diet. Uh, so all we're really going to do today is have some ground beef and some beef tallow. Uh, you can't get much simpler than that on a carnivore diet. If one was only consuming fat and muscle meat, it does get a little bit questionable. You know, do we need our omega-3s? Uh, do we need our vitamin A from liver? Do we need vitamin D3? Uh, Frankie Boy just got some sun, if you could not tell from my bronzed skin. Uh, I don't have liver today and I don't have any fish today, but it's really as simple as having like a cod liver supplement. I have one right here actually that I give to my family. Uh, this is Arctic cod liver oil. Uh, this is... Uh, range of 200 to 600 IU of vitamin A per serving. So, you know, you'd have to take like 15 to 20 cod liver oil pills uh, to get the amount of vitamin A that's normally in liver. But the nice thing about cod liver is this has your omega-3s, this has your vitamin A, this has a lot of nutrients. So just by having something like cod liver a few times a week, having a serving of liver a few times a week, some fatty fish, uh, you can easily get all the nutrients your body needs at a very affordable price. Uh, the bulk of the calories you're consuming, you know, 85 to 95 percent of them are really for energy. Uh, that other 5 to 10 percent is micronutrients, you know, focusing on specific foods to get you certain vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids that your body needs. Uh, so I have some uh, super fresh ground beef. Uh, this is actually the ground beef we are offering in our fresh beef pack on Frankie's Free Range Meat. I think we have a couple left, so uh, if you guys want to jump on that, fresh, never frozen beef. I have about two pounds here that we're going to saute in a pan, and I got a little secret I'm going to show you guys today. Uh, this is a pot of beef tallow, but this is no ordinary beef tallow. Uh, this is fermented beef tallow. So what I did was I took some raw beef fat. I let it rot for a couple of weeks at room temperature. I would probably take about two months in the fridge. And then I rendered it down at a low temperature into tallow. Uh, the reason people consume fermented foods and indigenous people, our hunter-gatherer ancestors, used to consume fermented foods is not only for the flavor, it's for the vitamin K2 content. So if you have a dairy allergy, if you have an egg allergy like I do, and you can't really tolerate high meat, uh, some people have a histamine intolerance. By rendering that fermented fat, I have a low histamine, low bacteria source of vitamin K2 that is hypoallergenic because it's not dairy, it's not eggs. And this stuff smells a little funky. By no means does it smell like rancid or rotten fat. You know, the raw fat was, oh man, that was pretty unbearable, especially when this was rendering. 
Uh, but the tallow itself is my little secret for vitamin K2. Uh, we might be selling this on Frankie's Free Range Meat soon. Uh, let me know if you guys would buy fermented tallow from us as a source of vitamin K2. And not only does this have vitamin K2, it has you know all of the fat soluble vitamins that would be present in beef fat with that added bonus of vitamin K2. And vitamins are synergistic. So when we're getting our vitamin A from liver, our vitamin D3 from the sun, we need to get vitamin K2 from some type of source and it tends to be the vitamin that some people have a difficult time getting. Uh, so by combining you know, that fermented beef tallow with our ground beef today, we're gonna have a pretty close to nutritionally complete meal. I have a carbon steel pan here. Uh, this is similar to cast iron. It has to be seasoned. It retains heat very well. It heats up very quickly. Uh, carbon steel is a little bit trickier to maintain, although it tends to be better as a non-stick surface. It's usually more expensive as well. Uh, I will do a video on cookware next week, uh, but you guys can like go on Amazon. They have a bunch of carbon steel pans. Uh, all we're really going to do is put the pan on high and we'll get the ground beef cooking. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of the fermented tallow in the pan. And the one thing I've noticed about carbon steel over any other pan is it heats up incredibly quickly. It gets smoking hot in about 30 seconds. Tallow starting to sizzle. Just gonna put a pound of ground beef in the pan. Okay, and this is good for me. This is how I like my ground beef. You know, it's a little bit raw throughout, but most of it's cooked. All right, so I'm gonna cook about another half of a pound. I do have a bigger carbon steel pan, but I haven't seasoned it yet. So I'm just gonna do two smaller batches of meat here. I think I'll go a bit more rare on this batch, so just warmed up a little bit. I'm sorry, I actually forgot to turn my microphone on earlier when I was filming the meal, and I normally only have one meal per day. Uh, it's now 11 p.m. We were going to have that meal at 2 p.m. I figured, you know what, let's do a throwback to my bodybuilding days. Let's do two meals. So I have my I didn't comb my hair hat on. Uh, when girls wear this hat, I call it the Tarzan hat. You know those girls that like dress up and they go to the gym and they're half naked but they wear a hat and they're like, it's like this and they don't want anyone to bother them. I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm the male equivalent of that. So uh, we're going with the, I don't want you to bother me unless you look like Tarzan, uh, then you could spank me look. That's what uh, we did today at the gym. Uh, but that's just my explanation for why I'm wearing the hat for you guys. Uh, so we do have the same identical meal uh, that we had earlier. And the reason I say this is a throwback to my bodybuilding, uh, you know, back in 2015 when I was training for a fitness competition, I would wake up and I would have a pound and a half of meat and some rendered fat. At the time, it was clarified butter. Uh, today, I have the fermented beef tallow. So this is essentially the meal that I build a lot of my muscle on. The main thing is pound and a half of meat, some fat to satiation, to appetite, this is an amount of meat and fat I've found that I'm comfortable eating twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. It's a very easy meal to digest. You know, it's ground beef. You don't have to chew it a lot. You have the rendered fat. It's very available to the digestive system. Nothing stressful. Uh, just add a little bit of salt. You know, this would be great with some organs here and there, but uh, we are actually getting all of the nutrition we need just in the meat and the fat. So I'm going to put some salt on top. You guys can probably see by the color of this meat, like half of it's raw, half of it's cooked. And as I said earlier, this is the fresh ground beef uh, that we're offering on Frankie's Free Range Meat.com in the fresh beef package. So if you want some of Frankie's meat in your mouth, uh, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat.com. Uh, we will have the fresh beef package available for about a week longer. I'm in like a love-hate relationship with ground beef. Like this is so good. And then like a week from now, I'll be sick of it. So not only one steak. I did add some of that fermented tallow to the ground beef, so maybe that's helping it a bit. If I eat like this every day, I'm going to be a chubby, thick Italian boy. 
ground beef, super tasty. I really like the contrast between raw and cooked meat. You know, I, I feel like at the beginning of the meal, I'm eating the raw meat, and then as the meal goes on, I start craving the cooked meat more. I start picking out those pieces. Uh, let's have some of the fermented tallow. Uh, so since I've had this before, I know what it tastes like. And if you guys are unfamiliar with high meat, high meat is essentially rotten meat, fermented meat. And every single hunter-gatherer group fermented meat because it gave the meat certain properties. The meat gets two things, beneficial bacteria and vitamin K2. By taking the raw fat that we fermented and rendering it, we're removing the beneficial bacteria. And this is good for people that have gut issues like SIBO, candida, histamine intolerance. Uh, this lowers the histamine content of it uh, so those type of people can tolerate it and get their vitamin K2 in. Uh, what's really interesting though is this beef tallow tastes just like the high meat, the rotten meat, except it has the texture and consistency of tallow, not of, you know, rotten raw meat. Think of it like cheesy beef butter. That's exactly what it tastes like. Cheesy beef butter. This is so damn good. What's interesting about that, if any of you old school Frank Tofano followers remember my food palatability video, is when you eat a certain amount of fat, you'll get a slight feeling of nausea. So your body has separate hunger signals for fat and protein. And you can only really eat a couple tablespoons of, of pure fat at once. Your body is going to tell you it's not hungry anymore. And if that's not the case, if you have issues with hunger signals, you might have some sort of nutrient deficiency. Let's touch on the nutrient content of this meal. Uh, as hunger is divided into fat and protein components, so can nutrients for the most part. The thing to keep in mind, though, is, you know, ground beef is not just protein. You know, there's fat mixed into the ground beef. So generally speaking, whenever we're talking about uh, a muscle meat cut or a protein cut, there is fat contained in that muscle meat. And this is important because fat is where the nutrients are. The fattier the muscle meat, the more nutrients it's going to have. If a muscle meat is very lean, it will have, you know, the B vitamins. It will have vitamin C. Uh, those are the two groups of water-soluble vitamins. And there will also be various minerals and elements in the meat. But in regards to actual fat soluble vitamin content, there needs to be fat. So we can usually make those two discrepancies between the lean and the fat of the animal. So as I said, we have the B vitamins and vitamin C primarily in the protein. But then when we go to the fat, we really do have everything. You know, we have vitamin A in the form of retinol. We have small amounts of vitamin D3, although, you know, we're getting D3 from the sun as we are meant to. Uh, we have vitamin E in the fat. All quality animal fat contains vitamin E. It's not something people talk a lot about, as well as vitamin K2 because it is a fermented food. Omega-3 fatty acids. Beef does have fairly good amounts of alpha-linolenic acid, which is the precursor to EPA and DHA, and that can be converted if you have a good ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 in your body. The issue with most people when consuming alpha-linolenic acid precursors to EPA and DHA is that their diets are so high in omega-6 that the omega-6 inhibits uh, the body's ability to utilize an enzyme called the 6-desaturase enzyme. This is the enzyme that converts alpha-linolenic acid into EPA and DHA. So when you overload the body with omega-6 fats, you can't convert alpha-linolenic acid into EPA and DHA efficiently. Uh, so reality is, this meal is nutritionally complete. Yes, we could have eaten some liver uh, for some more vitamin A, uh, you know, we could have had some fish for some more omega-3s, but just this, you could survive off of this for, you know, I don't know how long, really. Uh, if you want to do this and keep it affordable, you know, on Frankie's Free Range Meat, we do have cod liver for $2.99 a can, uh, cheapest price I've seen online. You know, you can get cod liver oil itself. Uh, you could buy liver locally from a farmer's market. Uh, liver, fish, especially wild fatty fish, 
are generally very affordable. So if you want to do add that extra nutrient content to your diet and supplement a little bit of those foods every week, it'll only be a few more dollars. Uh, the ground beef uh, cost me about five dollars a pound. So total cost for this meal is like eight dollars or less. And if you want to have two meals per day, it's like fifteen, sixteen dollars uh, per week. That's what like a hundred five, a hundred ten dollars. That's well below the average, you know, weekly grocery expenditure of $150. When you actually analyze the cost and see how much you're spending on food, it becomes very clear that a carnivore diet isn't more expensive than other diets. I personally do spend a little bit more than average, but that's because I buy a lot of really high quality food and I buy food for my family as well. So yeah, I spend seven, eight hundred dollars a month on food when the average person spends 600 that average person might only be spending 200 250 dollars on groceries and you know 300 350 you know buying coffee eating out going to restaurants things like that you know having snacks getting daily sandwiches so when that amount of money spent transitions directly to groceries people sort of panic a little bit i don't because i know i'm spending a similar amount of money to what other people are spending. It's just more of a direct investment in food from one source. Uh, so as I've mentioned, uh, you guys could check out, you know, the fresh beef box on Frankie's Free Range Meat. We are looking forward to offering the fermented beef tallow in the near future. As of right now, we just have uh, regular beef tallow. Right now, we also have a fat pack. Uh, we're going to be adding Iberico pork fat as well as lamb fat soon. And towards the end of the summer, guys, we should have some beef belly. So guys, definitely let me know down in the comments below uh, what other products you would like to see, uh, if there's any other fat sources you guys would like us to have. Uh, we are looking into uh, a grass-fed butter source as well. Might not have raw initially, uh, but you know, the more support we get, the more orders we fill, uh, the quicker we will be able to do the things you guys want us to do. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share it if you can. I'm probably going to um, have a couple more bites. I really did enjoy this meal. Uh, the tallow is delicious. The ground beef is very good. It's super simple, cheap, affordable, uh, goes down very easily. And for the next day, you know, I just take these leftovers. I leave them on the counter or throw them in the fridge, and then I'll do the same thing the next day. Uh, this, to me, is an example of a cheap, affordable meal in which you can be perfectly healthy with, and it tastes good because it's quality food. Uh, if you have high-quality meat, high-quality fat, and it's prepared adequately, it will always taste good. But, you know, if the fat you rendered wasn't grass-fed, if the meat is grain, you know, you could have issues depending on the food quality. So definitely keep that in mind. The reason this meal tastes good is because of the quality of the food, not so much the preparation. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. Let me know uh, what videos you guys would like to see in the future. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing some more live streams, maybe, uh, I don't know, out in nature, at the park, and we could also do uh, some more day-in-the-life stuff if you guys want to see that.